about the dance because I had thought with every dance great healings and deliverance would happen to the church. I had thought this because he had shown me many wheelchairs in the church. Our Lord God never explains details, however. His words are very brief and to the point. Great Tests The Lord began to test me in every area of my life. The biggest test of all concerned my loved ones. I also believe that my complaining about the dance had caused him to delay the fulfillment of his promises. Surely the Lord could have told me what I was doing wrong or right, but he wants me to learn my own way. His preparations in my life for the work he has called me to do have not been easy. I've learned that he does not want us to have anything the easy way. His word tells us that we must go through tribulation to enter his kingdom. See Acts 14:22. Dancing on the Platform On June 17, 2000, after my bedtime prayer and at the end of our talk, the Lord said, You must hear what I say about the dance. I replied, Whatever you say, Lord, I will expect and receive it. He said, You must dance on the platform tomorrow morning. You must go to church early and talk to the pastor and tell him you are going on the platform to dance. When I heard this, my heart dropped, because this is one thing I didn't want to do until miracles began to happen with my dance. Nonetheless, I told him, I will obey you, Lord. My heart was very disturbed about this, because I had been doing the same dance every Sunday, facing toward the congregation, since January 9, 2000. I had already heard from one of the pastors that church members were asking why I didn't turn toward the worshipers. I told him that I have to obey the Lord. It is not because I want to do this. My greatest concern has been that I would not disturb the worshipers, but I go against the Lord about such matters. My only response must always be that I would obey Him. About three months ago, I thought, what if the Lord wants me to go to the platform to dance? So I talked to the senior pastor, Pastor Wolfson, and asked him if I could dance anywhere, even on the platform. The pastor told me that I could dance anywhere, even on the platform. After he said this, I thought it wouldn't be a problem for me to dance on the platform if the Lord so directed me. When I got up on the morning of the 18th, I felt happy to be doing whatever the Lord asked me to do. I went to church early that morning, but I couldn't find Pastor Wolfson. While looking for him, I ran into the other pastor, and I told him what the Lord had said to me about dancing on the platform. This pastor said, It's out of the question. I then said to him, Pastor, you are putting people before God's word. The Lord has asked me to dance on the platform for the church's blessing. Then the Lord said to me, Do not be concerned about this. I will take care of it. While I was praying before the dance began, my heart was saying, In spite of the pastor's refusal, I intend to go up to the platform and dance, because I must obey the Lord, and I don't care if I am thrown out of the church. If there isn't enough room in front, I will go behind the worshipers if the Holy Spirit takes me there. Whatever the results, I didn't want to disobey the Lord. The Lord always knows my thoughts. His pleasantly reassuring voice said, Daughter, you do not have to go to the platform until such time as I am ready for you. I am very pleased with your obedience. Be happy. Whenever you go there, you will stand at the very front, never standing in back of the worshipers. The whole platform is yours. The Lord knew how much I didn't want to stand on the platform to dance with the worship team. I believe He wanted to make sure how far I would go to obey Him, to please Him, and to put Him first. I obeyed Him, and everything turned out all right. Attending Church for the Right Reasons 
After the new Puget Sound Christian Center, the church we had been attending previously, was built, they had to wait for an offering to cover expenses for the carpeting. It occurred to me that Roger and I could help pay for the carpets, so I asked the Lord about it. In a somewhat unpleasant voice, he said, My daughter, you must not be concerned about it. I don't look for carpet in my house. I only look for the church's heart. Most churches are trying to spend so much money for the church's beauty, but not many of them are trying to please me. I want every church to train the people for preaching the gospel and sending them out to the mission field. At the same time, he also expressed his displeasure about people who come to church without focusing on him first. On this particular morning, while I was praying for 30 minutes before the worship began, I noticed that I could hear people talking loudly and laughing. Many were sharing their whole week's experiences with each other. The Lord spoke to me. You see, my daughter, instead of bowing and praying before me, they would rather talk about worldly things. You can see why some churches are never blessed. Chapter 26 Evangelism and Giving For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 The vision of heaven that I have been so blessed to receive impels me to witness to others. I buy whole Bibles and New Testaments to give to others. I mark all of the important passages within them, write notes to explain about Jesus, and include a tract concerning salvation. I give these out every time I have the opportunity to witness. Since December 1999, I have also included our church bulletins and a tape of Mary K. Baxter's A Divine Revelation of Hell in the materials I hand out while witnessing. I put all of these in one package, and each time I go out, I take several with me. I have been giving them away as the Lord leads me. I never bring any of them back. I talk to people everywhere, in grocery stores, parking lots, the mall, other stores, at the post office, and in waiting lines at banks or anywhere else. What a privilege it is to witness for my Lord wherever I go. My desire to talk about Jesus is so overwhelming that I truly cannot help myself. Sometimes this is irritating to others who go with me, therefore I usually go out alone. I have learned that the best way for me to begin witnessing to someone is to simply ask if they believe in Jesus. Many will respond, I believe in God. This usually means that they don't know anything about Jesus. It is then that I begin to present the gospel message. I do experience some rejection when I'm witnessing, but this doesn't bother me at all. I have found that younger people and African Americans are very easy to witness to. Almost 99% of the unsaved young people I witness to will take the package of materials I give to them. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads me to pray for them at that moment. I pray for their salvation and cast the devil out each time. Whenever I cast the devil out, a fiery anointing comes over me and I jump. I believe this happens because it makes the Holy Spirit happy. I never plan what to pray for people. The Lord always directs me. Many people I've talked to know the Lord, but they don't have time for Him. So many Christians work on Sunday. A few times when I've tried to witness in the parking lot of the mall, the minute I mentioned the name of Jesus, people will say, I don't want to hear about it, and they will run away from me. In one case, a lady said to me, It is because of people like you that I don't want to go to church. I'm sure she said this because I had mentioned Jesus' name to her. To her, unfortunately, I was doing a terrible thing. She just didn't realize that all I wanted